Hello, I am Pastor Craig Storley. I am the interim pastor here at Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Welcome to the Sunday Sermon. invite you to join with me in a time of uh, centering prayer. I will guide you through it. Uh, we will get always through this together. I invite you to sit back in your church pews, or chairs, excuse me, most importantly so that you can be comfortable, as comfortable as you're able, and that you can breathe as easily and comfortable as you are able. Close your eyes or whatever helps you focus into the prayer. And so as we begin this, I invite you to let go of the cares and worries that you bring here to church this morning. Whatever it is you're worried about, whatever it is you're afraid of, whatever it is that you are worried about for next week, I want you to, if possible, let them go. Or even better, give them for God to carry for you as you take this time of prayer. Give them to God. Let God hold them so that you are able to know God's presence instead. And so as you give those cares and worries over, I invite you as you breathe in this time to breathe in God's love and presence here among us today. Breathe God in. Fill yourself with God's grace and love just for you. And as you continue to breathe in and out, each time you breathe in, feel, feel yourself fill with God's presence. Allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself to feel and know God with you. And this time as you breathe out, I invite you to let go of whatever still seems to be in the way of knowing God here with us. And as you let that go, breathe and center deeper in this next round. And so together, we center ourselves in God's grace, in God's love, and in God's wondrous presence. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you in peace this Sunday morning. Um, it's an interesting lesson that we have, a gospel lesson that we have this morning, in that um, Jesus is in the temple. He's teaching in the temple. Now, I don't know if you know much about how the temple was arranged in those days, but there was this huge space. Um, and basically, different teachers would be in different corners or in different places of the temple area, and they'd all have students coming up to them, and they would be teaching ways of Torah and ways of the law or um, offering special prayers. But anybody could come up when a teacher was present and listen and ask questions. And one of the things we forget was that Jesus was a rabbi. He, he isn't called that much in the New Testament, but he was a rabbi. He was a teacher. And so here he is in the temple. He's teaching. And... And we know, of course, that he's teaching. We don't know what he's teaching because the, the stories don't tell us that, but more than likely, he's teaching the people who have come to listen how to be and practice the presence of God in their world. How to practice and be in the presence of God. And, of course, that's very different from the way of the temple. And so the chief priests and the scribes and the, all the folks come up with him and and they're basically asking his credentials. You know, who gives you this authority? Now, we, of course, know that he's the Son of God. He has that direct authority, but Jesus is just a, t a teacher. 
And obviously, he's a good teacher because probably there's lots of people surrounding him just kind of generating questions and discussion and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, what are your credentials? Who gives you this authority? And, of course, the issue for them is, is they don't want anybody, you know, to take the power away from their church or away from the worship as they understand it. Just like, I don't want you to take any of my authority away from me, right? Why are you laughing? <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it, you know, we get turfy. We get turfy. What are your credentials? Where is your authority? Now, I have, I have some credentials on the wall in my office, and it's my ordination certificate. It has my graduation from seminary. I did graduate from seminary. I can prove it my graduation from college, things like that. I, but Jesus didn't carry credentials like that. That was not something you did in those days. But a rabbi was honored. A rabbi was a teacher. Jesus was a teacher. He spent, if you think about it, he spent three years wandering around the Sea of Galilee teaching. And here he is in Jerusalem. And of course they ask him this question, you know, where do you get this authority? And, and Jesus, being the good teacher, returns the favor. He asks them a question. Well, did John's ministry come from God? Or basically, did he just make it up? You know, why he would be sitting in the middle of the River Jordan freezing his buns off, would you make up that kind of ministry? But did he just make it up? And of course, the answer is, they go, well, if we say, you know, um, now this is the part I always forget. Okay, here we go. If we, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then don't you believe in him? Because, of course, he came for people to change and prepare for the Messiah. Um, but if we say of human origin, then they say we're afraid of the crowd because they think he is a prophet. So there's this conundrum. And basically, he's asking them to practice what they preach, so to speak. To, to see what it is they're asking. And of course, what are, they, what are they, they doing? They are protecting the law. You know, what they're teaching in the temple and, and the way of being a good, faithful servant of God in Jerusalem is by practicing the law. Now, when Moses gave the law, or when Moses came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, the purpose of the law was to give basically these marvelous guidelines so that people would learn how to live and love each other as God loves them. Now, they, came, they come across as laws to us, right? Don't commit murder, don't steal, don't covet your neighbor's cows or manservant or maidservant or wife, don't lie, don't, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we tend to think of them as laws, but their purpose was to lead us into a gracious life, so that by practicing this, by doing this over and over again, suddenly we get to that point and go, oh, this is what it means to live in the grace of God. And Luther understood that very much. And of course, that's what Jesus is challenging them to do. And he has this little parable where, you know, he says, you know, a man sends two sons into the vineyard. One says, I'll do it, but the, I won't do it, then changes his mind. And the other says, I will do it, but then leaves and doesn't do anything. And um, that whole conundrum, how do we hear, how do we practice, how do we, is it okay to change your mind? And then he, 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 he kind of gets nasty. Jesus got nasty now and then. He, he looks at them and he says, well, you know, the tax collectors, and of course, everybody, everybody still hates tax collectors, but in those days, the tax collectors and the prostitutes were considered the most unclean people that ever existed in the city of Jerusalem. They get it. They actually get it, and you don't. You know, They have heard, they went to John, they changed their lives because they were asked to, and you heard it, and it just went right over your head. And again, practice what you preach. If you want to practice and share the grace of God, you know, then do so. Don't, you know, it's so, it's easy to follow the rules and regs when you can point your fingers at, especially those people who don't. If you want to think of them, they're kind of the fundamentalists of their day. If, if you don't follow the rules, they're just terrified that God will be out of control. 
Yesterday, we, we um, had a memorial service for James Thomas Ryan. And many of, the, many of you know James and, and had seen him around here. I think he usually, did he usually sit on this side or did he sit all over the place? Anyway, when you first saw James, you were kind of taken aback because it looked like there was this homeless guy here at church. And I remember that for many of you, it was, it was, it was, it was like, well, what's he doing here? And why is he here? Um, and one of the things, the gifts that, that James brought to this church was the fact that somehow he connected. And this became his church. Now when you saw him, you went, well, why is he here? And yet he's here working in the background, doing all these jobs that none of us had time to do, to fix things, to repair things, to paint things. And one of the gifts that he brought to this church was the fact that it makes us think, who belongs? Who belongs? And because he was here, hopefully it's easier to let and recognize and welcome so many, many others. I mean, that's the whole purpose, right? That's the whole purpose of the law, is to treat others as God, God loves us. To share that love and grace with everyone we meet. Whether we like them or not. <laughs> and whether they look like we think they should look or not. Amen.